Hey X fans, I'm your expert Jake Wallace and welcome back to X-Men Expertise, the show where I talk about all things X-Men. And today, to celebrate the release of the new film Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, I'm going to tell you all about when the X-Men met Shang-Chi. I just got home from seeing Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings and I absolutely loved it. It has a fantastic script and beautiful fight choreography and Simu Liao's portrayal of Shang-Chi has given me a whole new appreciation for the character. But what does this have to do with X-Men? Well, did you know that the X-Men once teamed up with Shang-Chi? <laughs> It all happened in the 1997 story, Games of Deceit and Death, which ran through X-Men number 62, 63, and 64. But before we get into that, just who is Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi. Shang. 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 S-H-A-N-G, Shang. Shang-Chi is a hero known as the Master of Kung Fu. An occasional Avenger, Shang is a baseline human who is expertly trained in every form of martial arts. He's the son of a powerful crime lord who's rumored to be immortal. However, Shang-Chi rejects his father's criminal ways and chooses to use his abilities to fight crime and combat his father's evil empire. Shang-Chi was introduced in 1974's Special Marvel Edition number 15, and the character proved so popular that the series was renamed Master of Kung Fu with issue 17. It would run for another 10 years until it ended with issue 125 in 1983. Shang-Chi spent the next few decades floating around the Marvel Universe, making very sporadic guest appearances. So it was quite a shock when he got a three-issue spotlight with the X-Men in the Games of Deceit and Death storyline. The story opens with Shang-Chi fending off a group of hand ninjas before being attacked by Wolverine. Now, if you're wondering why Wolverine looks so weird and has bone claws, this story takes place a few years after Magneto ripped the adamantium from his skeleton during the Fatal Attraction storyline. After that story, Marvel spent years having Wolverine slowly devolve and fight against his animalistic nature, resulting in the bestial design you see in these issues. But back to the story at hand. Storm quickly tells Wolverine to back down, and you do not want to mess with Storm. I summon the full power of the storm! Shang-Chi meets with the X-Men and learns that Sebastian Shaw and the Hellfire Club are trying to obtain the Elixir Vitae, the same elixir that allowed Shang's father to live for hundreds of years. Shaw wants the elixir because he believes it can be used to engineer a cure for the Legacy Virus, a cure he can profit from. So what is the Legacy Virus? Well, at the end of 1992's Executioner's Song crossover, Mr. Sinister unwittingly unleashed a deadly airborne virus that targets mutants and slowly kills them. And the X-Men have been looking for a way to stop the virus ever since. Uh, that is, when the writers didn't completely forget that the legacy virus was even a plot line. Shang and the X-Men travel to Hong Kong to confront Shaw, who sends a team of cybernetic ninjas to attack them. And after the X-Men defeat his goons, Shaw himself appears. Now this is a big deal. In the early 90s, Sebastian Shaw was seemingly killed by his son Shinobi. And while the X-Men have heard rumors that Shaw is still alive, this is the first time they've been face to face with him, one of their oldest and deadliest enemies. After Shaw fills the X-Men and Shang-Chi in on his plans, they decide to break into the facility where Shaw believes the elixir is being held. But when they do, they run into the kingpin of crime himself, Wilson Fisk. Holy crap! I mean, I guess if you're gonna do a story with an off-the-wall guest character like Shang-Chi, you might as well throw a Daredevil villain into the mix too. In a surprising turn of events, Sebastian Shaw comes to the X-Men's rescue. But only because it supports his own ends. Shang-Chi realizes that it would be far too dangerous for either of these evil men to obtain the Elixir Vitae, and decides to destroy it. However, he's beaten to the punch by Storm, who calls down lightning to destroy the elixir and all of the equipment in the room. What did I tell you? You do not want to mess with Storm. Evil must be stopped. And that's Games of Deceit and Death. 
If you'd like to read the story, it can be found in the newly released Shang-Chi Earth's Mightiest Martial Artist paperback, which collects some of Shang-Chi's most famous guest appearances over the years. X-Men number 62, 63, and 64 can also be read a la carte via Marvel Unlimited or Amazon's Comixology service. Check the description below for links to all the places you can read the story. That's all for today, X-Fans. Follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at X-Men Expertise, and follow me at Minus the Snake. If you're able to support the show, please consider donating on Patreon. You can find more info on the Patreon in the description below. And don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons to find out about new episodes as soon as they're posted. I'll see you soon.